fish. But when I came into the water, there was something limitless about my body. There was a time and a space where you actually, I could actually believe that I'm not just this body, that I'm literally a soul living in this planet through physical form. And it's in the water that I really felt the essence of me being a soul and that my body is just the physical form. And this was really a process, and if you ask me how long, I would say that the process continues. Arjana came to America in 92 um, to um, learn Watsu and she had with her partner Aman uh, developed what it ends. So she came the following year with a manual and with a course description and with certain moves that could be taught and that is how the form of water dance as a form of body work um, was created uh, by Arjana and Aman. And so this was yeah, simultaneously happening as Watsu was being created. They didn't know about Watsu at that time. Aquatic bodywork is a relatively new form of bodywork. There has been aquatic therapy in the past where people were shown how to do exercises and led to exercises in water. Aquatic bodywork is different in that we pick up a person, hold them and float them and stretch them and are with them during the whole process. I developed this over 25 years ago here at Harbin Hot Springs where I brought up students to teach them Zen Shiatsu, which I had studied in Japan. In Zen Shiatsu, we use a lot of stretching, and I found that floating people in the water, I could do the same stretches, and they were more effective in water than on land. I also found something else starting to float people. I found that there was a greater sense of connection when you're holding someone in your arms and floating with them. Often a sense of heart connection, very strong, a sense of oneness. And I wanted to explore that further and I was showing all my students in Zen Shiatsu how to go in water and start working in water and, uh, with that. At Right from the beginning, uh, we started offering drop-in classes to visitors coming up to Harbin where they could float each other for an hour and a half or two hours. And we saw that it was having really profound effects on them, just being able to hold someone and float them and stretch them a little. So as I started developing Watsu, I kept in mind that it had two different paths. One was the developing professionals who would go out and work in clinics and spas and that. And the other was a path in which people could just learn to float each other and feel that connection and oneness that comes when you hold and float someone in your arms. My name is Simone Schiffnadel, and I'm a body worker. I've been doing massage for a while. Once I learned Watsu at the school, it was more challenging than I thought it would be to be in the water all the time. Definitely brings up a lot of emotional stuff and physical stuff. And once I was able to kind of relax into it, I really loved the balance that you find in between the holding and the letting go. In the water, you're actually being held by someone, which is something that just doesn't happen in everyday life with, you know, other than the people that you're intimate with. So it's a wonderful uh, way to just really experience that closeness in a very safe, supported way. And at the same time, you're being supported more by the water I think it's safe to say then the person in there just there to offer just enough support. But it's a different kind of relaxation in the water. It's just, it's almost like you're in another, you're in another place and you get to go really deep and really within, but that's where you choose to go. So it's, it's a different plane for sure. And in the process of looking again at this, I started realizing what is involved in this containment when we hold someone, just how, the, how that relates to the other forms of energy that we've always been feeling in, in our work. And the 
What we learned first going into the water was how deeply we could go into the breath, into the emptiness at the bottom of the breath. And because the, we, our body is moved in water with the breath, and that emptiness was, was to share that with another person who is easy to go into that. And that emptiness is right at our base, at our center, the base of our center. And this is the same place that other forms of energy have their origin. We have the chakras, which have a kind of energy that works more as resonance, like tuning forks, that is vibrational. We have meridians, which is energy that's flowing through the body through channels. Both of these have their origin in that base. And it, that's the base that we drop into the emptiness at the bottom of the breath. And as I was thinking about that, I thought how those two forms of energy also combine when we see waves in people's bodies, which is very common when they're being floated in water for their body to go in waves. And also the experience that people have of that wave rising, which is sometimes called kundalini. And the Taoist method of taking that rising wave and bringing it back into the emptiness at the bottom of the breath. How do you teach? presence, because I feel like presence is really the essence of w where the healing uh, comes from. Um, when I'm working with clients, um, conscious touch is, is so important to, to be able to touch someone in a way that, that is non-invasive, in creating a safe space, it's about accepting each person exactly where they are. You know, um, when I go to the water, um, walking into the pool, it becomes a, a sacred space where, where I can meet someone exactly where they are and, and not try and change them, and not try and make them any different or heal them or be a mother or be a lover or anything like that. It's just holding space for them. The dancing drops now below the surface of the water into the depth. Here follow wide circular movements around the body's axis. Turning, bending, stretching and diving deeper. I begin to forget about time and space. There is no noise, only the sporadic, vibrating humming from my partner and the gentle rushing of the water that surrounds me. My name is Richard, and um, Richard Bach, and I've been involved with body work ever since I came to Harbin about 14 years ago. Let's see. So when I hear you question, you know, about the breath and what does it do when it shuts down, well, when your breathing shuts down, you die uh, to the one extreme. And then if you just take it to the other extreme and the breath is really flowing freely, you become a, a very ecstatic and alive in every cell of your body. And um, the way we effectively shut the emotional body down, and we learn, most of us learn that early on in childhood because it's too much, you're too loud is to shut the breathing down. And that's how the emotional body stays under wraps. It stays controlled. And so um, the aquatic body work has just been another avenue to um, get in touch with the breath and really encourage the breath and coax it out and really yeah. find the places in the body where there's holding, where there's old patterns, where there's a shutdown. Yeah. And then, and then um, but by bringing awareness to that, by bringing attention to it, that can start, start to open up and start to release um, in people. That the essence of all body work is that when the practitioner is really present and open, spaciously open in a way that the receiver can journey their deepest fears, their sense into the darkest secrets or whatever is there emotionally, physically, whatever is still held, when there is a space that is safe enough to do that, that then healing occurs. Okay. That then we come out of the past and we come into the present and into the body more fully. And 
besides just maybe even a general theme of trust, often it's this process of trusting their emotions. All these messages that people have in their lives, it's not okay to cry, you know, buck up, whatever those messages are that have become conditioned, that suddenly when they have the experience that it's okay, I can let this feeling move through me and that it actually has a wisdom and a healing in it and it does come to a completion. It's not going to last forever and ever and ever. That has tremendous impact in, in their experience. Yes. It's, it's our, we touch back into our essence and where we are whole and complete. And oftentimes from there see a lot of our patterns and where we developed them, what we formed beliefs around. All of a sudden I realized that this is like the posture I had with my father. Even if it didn't always look that way, my body was always that way. Because there was, you know, I was getting beaten up a lot. And to give the body this um, permission to have this, but in a safe space, so on that day something huge, it's hard to describe because it wasn't like, I mean it had some psychological impacts, but it, my relationship with my father changed that day. When, when, when traumas like this come up for, for people, we don't attend to them like in a psychological way, we don't process through stuff. It is, it is just that when the space is right, that people can come to their own realizations, their own recognitions, without any verbal prompting or without any searching or, um, um, you know, processing. Yeah. And that's so beautiful about this work. I, I really have come to this place with teaching water dance where I feel like it's not that you learn water dance, you actually become water dance. So the water is a master teacher. It, it's, it's always guiding us in the direction of more fluidity. That's its wondrous offering. All life originated in the water. The hidden but still functioning diving reflex is proof of this. The body's metabolism, muscle activity, heartbeat and breathing are automatically slowed when the face is sprayed with water and a profound relaxing and meditative state follows. Being really close to somebody and physical contact, that's something we are afraid of. I mean, we hug maybe somebody, but it's not, it's not for a long time and then you let go and then you feel awkward already. And, yeah. and here this is very natural and I really enjoy that, especially being touched and being held by somebody else because since I have never really experienced that as a child, uh, it, it was an issue for me. And this has certainly helped, I mean, now I've received so many sessions and uh, I'm much more comfortable with other people, being close to other people. Yes. During the session, yeah. I felt that it was both. It was the therapist that was working with me, the Watsu practitioner, the water, and also the movements of Watsu. First of all, I felt very... Uh, met, very respected by the Watsu therapist. I was seen as a whole person, not as a case coming in to have a part of my body worked on. Lying down in the water was incredibly relaxing, soothing and supportive, where I was out of pain, probably for the first time in two years. In other modalities, I had felt a lot of, you know, pain as I was receiving the therapy. 
I felt no pain at all in Watsu. In a Watsu session, whether it's in a class or just a regular session, what happens is that we slow down. And I think that's, that's one of the magic things that Watsu has to offer the world because in our fast-paced society, we're always doing and we actually believe our self-worth has to do with all the things that we've done. I can see that from the outside looking in that people can mistake what we're doing. Um, they might, depending on their eyes and where they're, they're upbringing, they're, where they're coming from, being that close with someone is very intimate and it can be mistaken as a sexual intimacy. And Watsu is beyond that, um, or, or any of the aquatic body work is, is beyond that. So um, it's interesting that our culture will, if two people are close, rather than seeing that as this is real connection here happening now, and it's a heart connection, uh, our culture tends to go, oh, they're really close. It's a sexual connotation. And water work is not that. But pure intimacy is a closeness from the heart. Um, some people have broken it down to as intimacy is into me see. And that someone is holding them in such a closeness and connection that, that the person can begin to feel their own intimacy with themselves. It's not about the therapist. It's about coming into your own intimacy with yourself, with the oneness that you feel with creation. aquatic work, we, we experience boundaries, like I talked about with exercises. We do self-inquiry of what is a boundary to you. Often uh, students have no idea or clients do not know what a boundary is for them. Or how do you know when you've crossed someone else's boundaries? And how do you know when your boundaries have been crossed? Because often we don't know it until too late.